Hello, hello, and welcome. We are so glad that you are here. And if you're here, you are likely a big believer in the power of video. Maybe you're using Big View to create your content. I use it all the time. Whether you are creating videos, speaking in front of others live on stage, or having important conversations with your clients or your boss, you do not want to miss today's presentation with guest expert Steph Kawasaki. Today, we're going to be mastering the art of connecting. If we haven't met yet, I'm Cheryl Tan. I'm a media trainer. I work with coaches, consultants, and corporate executives to help them show up with more confidence on camera. Whether your goal is to be a confident public speaker, a confident video creator, or a better presenter for your team, I can help you. Okay, so who is here today? If you are joining us, please let us know. We're so fortunate to have people joining us from around the world, and we love that this group is so engaged. So if you are here, let us know where you are joining us from. So say hello. I'll wait here a moment. I'm in Virginia Beach, uh, and we, I know, have people, again, from around the world. So let us know. Just say hi, and let us know what city you're joining us from. Tell us whether you love creating videos or whether you love speaking on stage. We love that. We love that interactivity. Uh, Coach Prem is from India. Welcome. Great to have you here. And I think you'll love the conversation we have today. Um, we've got Oh, everyone's moving in so quickly. Uh, Pacey is from Lake Charles, Louisiana. We've got SB. Oh, we've got Sarah from Canada. Nikki is from the UK. Again, a global audience. It's so good to have you guys here. Speaking of interactivity, you may have questions. I probably will have questions too. Our speaker today will be happy to answer those questions. If you have a question for Steph, please type a Q in the comments and I'll make sure that we get those questions in front of her. So again, we've got more people joining here from all around the world. We've got Annabelle from California. We have Christopher from Cape Town, South Africa. Um, let's see, automated five-star reviews from North Carolina, Isabel from London. I love that. So keep them coming. Keep that conversation going in the chat as well. And I want to tell you more about our speaker. Steph Kawasaki is the creator of Hope Inspired Solutions. She's a master at leading teams through complex challenges, often related to communication and personalities. She de developed strategies that helped people discover and embrace their communication styles, unique value, and positively influence their teams. She is a two-time international best-selling author with the Women Speakers Association. She is a professional speaker herself and an on-screen actor. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Stick around until the very end. Steph has a very generous giveaway that you don't want to miss. Okay, so I want to introduce you now to Steph Kawasaki. Steph, thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, aloha, and thank you for having me this morning. Well, it's morning here in Hawaii, but thank you. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> Hi. Okay. So tell us, you are in Hawaii. Tell us a little bit more about yourself than what I mentioned about you earlier. And there's just so much to, to talk about. So just tell us a little bit about yourself and I've got more questions for you. Oh boy. I'm excited. Okay, great. Well, I'm known as the human connector and I create inclusive environments for that facilitate conversations and connections between people. So being a highly shy introvert person for you, those out there of you, of you, for those of you out there that are in this category, there's hope because um, we, as we realize what our value is and how we make an impact in the world. Um, I realize that standing behind others that were so brave to speak up um, was not advantageous. It was not, I wasn't living my full potential. I realized mm -hmm. that. And I, um, I finally realized that, you know, God created me uh, for a purpose. And, and the vision that he had for me was, it had to be bigger than the fear of me living it. So it was those, you know, little moments in my life during my life, during my career, uh, that I realized that, 
you know, allowing other people to talk for me in person and on video, uh, in, video uh, in person was, was not really, you know, living my full potential. So, uh, yeah, it's been a journey and I'd love to share it with all of you today. <laughs> well, we can't wait to dig into that more. And I will say, I imagine there are people who are watching this now or maybe watching the replay in the future that will resonate with that, will feel like maybe they are not doing something that they feel they could do more of. And the other part I think is is so critical is, is the introvert part that you had mentioned. Um, I imagine there are people also who yeah. connect with that. They're like, I don't feel like I'm that extrovert person, but I feel more connected to being an introvert. And if that's you, let us know if you're wanting to talk about that in the chat. It's definitely a point of connection for many people. And we were talking about this before we got on the call is uh, video is a great way to do that. If, if you are an introvert, you have the opportunity to show your personality especially with some of these communication techniques that you're going to talk about today, you can show your personality and people don't need to know you're necessarily an introvert. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So let's hear more about what the art of connecting is, how to master that art of connecting and how you came to create this program, this, this, uh, this way to help people. Okay, great. Well, let's take a look at our uh, next slide. A little bit about me, a little bit more background, just so we can kind of dive into that part. The um, basically, I my background is uh, very, like I said, I was shy, introvert, shy meaning you know I would rather have other people shine in front of me. Uh, introvert meaning I I really recharge alone. Although I really do like being with people and engaging with them, I really do. It's just that I, I can do it and it takes a lot of energy. But then again, you know, I need to go and have some time alone after or before, like take a nap before and take a nap after. Yes, <laughs> <My yes. engagement. laughs> but um, other than that, um, I come from a growth mindset. Um, and um, like on this next slide that we're, ha you know, we have right here, here we go. <laughs> a growth mindset, a little uh, visual here. Um, uh, these are some of the words that describe me. I'm ex very expressive. Um, I'm engaging. I love to engage with people. Um, I think sometimes a little bit too animated and drama, but that's hello. That's how I am. <laughs> uh, I'm a very creative person. I, uh, I'm always trying to invent new things. Uh, so that's something that I have to be careful of because I, I love creating, um, dreaming up of new ideas, but then execution is something that I need to work on. Uh, I live in a gratitude space, meaning always being grateful for everything and anything. Um, even those little sparks of gra gratitude that, you know, um, we can think of every day. Um, my faith, family, I I live with a, a mindset of serving others and how I can um, give and share with others. And also uh, I'm an actor mm -hmm. and how that <laughs> came along. And um, if I can do a shameless plug for Big View is um, when my three adult kids left home all at once because two got married and one went to college, um, we I got a puppy for our dog because she she was lonely. And then my husband took up golf. And then I went to sign up for it with an agency uh, to do commercials and acting. And that was the part that I needed to get out of under my rock um, and engage with people. And it was a world that's for you actors out there. I hope you can relate to me. But, um, you know, when they give you the sides of and what a side is, it's like part of a script. And uh, I used to print it out and tape it all over my uh, wall and practice while I'm trying to uh, practice for auditions. But when Big View came along as a teleprompter, I just loaded on the teleprompter and the Big View app. And oh my gosh, it was so much easier to practice my my auditions. Anyway, okay, so I'm oh, an actor. And actually, Steph, so you're saying that Big View helped you get your big break on screen. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Well, uh, yes. You know why? Because it was so much easier to to yeah. practice live. 
you know, yeah. while you're practicing to look in that little green dot on your laptop, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Or on mm -hmm. your phone and um, not having to break that concentration and look at your script and, you know, um, the teleprompter with the sides were actually just running and you were just practicing. It was, yeah. it's, it's a game changer. Let me tell you, it was, it was a game changer uh, being so. able to use the teleprompter feature. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So other than that, I, um, that's a little bit about me and now going on to the um, connecting part of it, um, approachability and active listening and body language. Uh, okay, so approachability, our next slide. If we were to ask your coworkers, your family members, which one would they say you are? Are you the shark as in terms of approachability? <laughs> okay, let's ask our audience. Yes. Please put one of these in the chat. <laughs> and hang on, actually, may I go back a little bit, Steph? Yes, um, yes. First of all, a lot of people in our audience are really, they're connecting with you. Nikki says introverts are very much underestimated and yet they have so many valuable skills. And then we have uh, Coach Prem saying, I'm also an introvert and always have the hesitation to speak in front of new people, try to be an extrovert. And, um, and I just wanna say that I so admire you for, for doing something that seems kind of scary right? To, you know, you're signing up with an agency, you're getting on screen, you're doing something completely different. And I just, I think that's remarkable. And can I give you the opportunity to give that shameless plug of where people can see you? <laughs> where can people see you on screen? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Like on in film and yeah, yeah. yeah. Where can people oh, find okay. you? Well, I happen to, oh, I had my biggest break was <laughs> on the White Lotus. Um, and um, yeah, of course, it was a background, but it was fun to be in a different element. And going back to your introverted people, you know, um, I think all our greatest gift is being able to use those listening skills and really plug in to allow others to speak and to talk and to share, but in the meantime, providing valuable feedback mm -hmm. in a thoughtful manner. I think that's critical. Yeah. And not to say anything bad about the extroverts. I mean, like we, I, I have a lot of extroverts surrounding me, uh, which I think is a very good, beautiful dance if we could get together. Because when I'm tired and I need to just kind of recharge, I just, you know, allow other people. I don't know. Cheryl, are you an introvert or extrovert? I think I'm in the middle. I really okay. think I've really thought about this. And I think I'm kind of I straddle that line. And I think the electric honeybee is saying the same thing. Introvert and extrovert when I'm extremely motivated. So kind of like mm. a little bit of both. Um, but the electric kind of he says, but when I make a mistake, I shrink back into being an introvert. And I, I kind of connect yeah, with that as well. I too. definitely see yeah. that. Yeah. And I think too, we can sort of pick times, different times when you are more introverted times when you're more extroverted. It could be when you're with your family, you're an extrovert. And when you mm -hmm. are in a situation, maybe like this, you're more introverted. But um, so it, it's, it's definitely one to be more self-aware of. And I'm so glad you're bringing this up. Um, and so Nikki is saying definitely actively listening is so very important in the art of connecting with others. They're definitely seeing that. And you had mentioned earlier, so before I, I think I cut you off, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> we are asking people to choose who they connect oh, yeah. with most, the shark mm -hmm. or the teddy bear in terms of approachability. And uh, let's, let's see some answers. Which one would people say you are? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So f for for me, just to kind of give space while, but while we're listening, waiting for others to respond in, um, I can be both, <laughs> Agreed. right? I mean, it just depends on, you know, if I need a nap or <laughs> if I need more, if I need to be engaging with more people, you know, right after my nap, I'm probably the teddy bear, you know, or when I'm stretched or when I'm hungry, tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can be the... 
the mm-hmm. shark. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it depends. And doc, you know, Dr. Paula Perez says depends both. I was kind of thinking about this too. For me, it's like, is it my kids? Is it, <laughs> around my kids, I'm probably the shark. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Yeah. And it depends on what's happening in the house that they've left. Yep. Just, you know, you just never know. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the, the bottom line, I think, um, is mindfulness in what capacity or what, um, you know, environment we're in. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of going back to the, the acting thing, if you're on stage uh, live, you know, um, you might have to turn it up a little, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and to be more approachable. And uh, that's, that's the thing is, is being mindful. Yeah. of our approachability. I think too, as we're talking about approachability is it, it sounds simple, right? Like, oh, you know, don't be a shark, right? But it's, it's, not as, it's not as simple as that. And I know in your experience in the corporate world, in working with so many teams, you see what happens, it's not black and white, right? You see mm-hmm. what happens when people are not approachable and it happens in the workplace all the time. So I'd love for you to share with us some experiences that you've seen as p- poor examples of approachability of what the the consequences are when you mm-hmm. aren't what you should be in terms of approachable. Good question. Because <laughs> one situation comes up to mind is when I... Uh, we went to a, um, we landed at a airport, of course, and we, it was late at night, went to the car rental and the, there was two people on the <laughs> counter helping the customers. And we were just waiting in line. Um, this one lady on the other end, she was just in her own little world. She was the customer service person that should be giving us the car and literally just ignored us didn't even Uh you know i don't think she was just so fixated on what she was trying to accomplish and it might have been very important i totally understand however acknowledging i think the the thing that i was really um um taken aback was that she didn't acknowledge us And of course, she wasn't helping customers because she was doing something else. But even if looking up and acknowledging and um, affirming, thank you for waiting, um, but I am not open right now and serving customers, um, you have to go back into that line and, and, you know, have that other woman help you or other customer service help you. But um, she didn't acknowledge us at all. And so we were just standing in line for a good, you know, maybe five minutes before I... I said, excuse me, are you helping, you know? And so I think the bottom line there is uh, acknowledging someone, making eye contact. Um, and and even if you're not able to help them at that time or engage or connect with them, at least acknowledge and, you know, say why I'm not yeah. able to help you, right? So, that, yeah. How would you say that this can translate to kind of the online world? Like we're talking about using Big View as a teleprompter, uh, creating video content. People who are joining us may be trying to connect in many different ways, whether it's online or on stage or with a boss or a client or anything like that. How would you say that translates? How can you create more approachability um, with your audience, wherever that Mm. audience may be? Yes, um, so many, so many opportunities. Uh, I think the biggest one is eye contact, mm-hmm. uh, nodding, because you know when we're in like uh, um, a, a, a forum like this, sometimes uh, if the other person is not engaging by looking at that little green dot and nodding and you know tracking that you're listening, um, that's that's helpful. Um, other than that, I, you know, it's, it's, it's all about the thinking about the other person yeah. and the value that they ha- have to say. Like, um, so I could be so engrossed in what I need to say. I might even forget. What did you ask again? <laughs> uh, what did you say again? <laughs> and I've done that too. I've, done, I've, I've gotten into that trap 
so many times because I'm so worried about what I'm going to say next or what's on my script. You yeah. know, Big View has been so helpful for me in that respect is too because I, I I can track it and I can stop the teleprompter yes. and engage, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good feature, I tell it's you. It's a great feature. <laughs> it's a really good feature, yeah. <laughs> so when it stops for you, you can engage and then you can go back to your script and see what you need to, the points that you need to make. Um, so it really helps you with that connection and that building that relationship that can go deeper. Yeah. 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 I love that. I love that. I'm excited. Yeah. I know you had spoken earlier about active listening and I'd love to hear more about your, your ideas of how we can be better listeners other. Well, I'm sure part of it is just being quiet <laughs> so that you can't, so that I can listen, but there's gotta be, <laughs> there's more. I know there's more, so I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Um, Active listening. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, so there's actually three types of active listening. I mean, not three types. Hello. Three types of listening. One of them is active listening, but the first one is like passive listening. So I'm just listening um, to the person speaking, a little distracted with my phone here and there, um, looking at the birds flying, um, not really making uh, an effort to understand what the other person's saying. Second one is active listening. It's actually fully engaging, looking at the person in the eye, tracking what they're saying, hearing their emotions behind their words. Mm -hmm. um, I could actually just say, hi, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. I'm having a great day. <laughs> I mean, like, right? You would probably say, ooh. I'd be like, I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, you know, sometimes we need to... Um, really track what the person is saying plus how they're saying it how are they coming across are they excited even if it's okay now we want to be authentic sometimes you know of course you know sometimes i go over the top only because i get super excited it doesn't take very much to for me to get excited but um you know we just want to track their emotions as well and for those of us that are need practice i mean it's just a matter of just really being present, mm -hmm. you know, being present. And we all, I, I get distracted so easily. So I think I've had to practice being present, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, especially when your granddaughter comes and puts her hands on your, no, no, pay oh. attention. You know, I've, I've, I've got to those <laughs> responses. Okay. So next one, critical think, critical listening. And that is a even higher way we can actually, um, use our listening skills. So that that is about um, processing what we're listening to and how the person is, is coming across and making behavior changes or strategizing how we can make, um, collaborate together or, you know, accomplish things. And that's usually in a team setting as well. Yeah. But yeah. I love that. I love that. So passive listening, active listening, critical listening. And what are some strategies that can help us practice this active listening? Okay, let's see. Um, again, I think it's all about being present. And, you know, I think sometimes, um, well, this me, for me, again, uh, some of us, we can get distracted really quickly. Some of us can really zone in at, at, at a moment's no, notice. I think sometimes we, what we need to, what we can do, an option is to practice the um, doing one thing at a time. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to say, isn't it? I'm with you. <laughs> it's hard to say because it's like, I don't want to do that. But, right. but here, so Nikki is saying being present with someone is so important when practicing active listening. Putting away our phones, that's hard. It's like, hard. It's, just, it's like, Ding, ding, ding. But it's uh, putting it into practice um, makes it kind of difficult. But um, yes. but yeah, so Coach Prem also says, be active and be mindful. Stay away from notifications. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, turn it's notifications. Good idea. It is yeah, a good it idea. Is. That's a really good idea. Yeah. So yeah, I you. guess uh, what I always say, especially to my kids, is we're all a work in progress, right? We, we know what sometimes the right thing is 
Mm -hmm. uh, but it's putting it into practice and it, it is making the time to make that happen. Right. right, so right. The time. I love that. I love the reminder, Steph. Yes. I really, I love that. I love yeah. it. I love Great. it. Great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's basically it. That's a good idea. I, li I like that notifications things. That's, that's actually a setting, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, the phone. Oh, you know, sometimes our, at our, um, family gatherings, um, sometimes what I like to do is say, okay, um, let's do, you know, let's go back to the old fashioned way of engaging board <sighs> games. And then, you know, everybody put their phone down and we'll, we'll you know, literally look at each other and speak <laughs> without having to bring that phone out. But yeah, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I think too, with the kids, um, it's, it's good to remind them that there was, that there is life without an electronic, I mean, cause that's yeah. all they've really known, at least for my kids. I mean, their ages make it so yeah. that they've always had one. So it, it's, it's, it's a nice reminder. Definitely. Okay, so we've gone through, let's see, we've gone through the approachability, mm -hmm. active listening, and then there's one more, right? The body language. Yes, yes. Okay, um, okay body language. Okay. <laughs> you know, I think this one is a really good one. Not only do we all have a body that we and be able to communicate, but I think... Um, the idea of uh, grabbing on to that curious, hmm. um, curiousness to all, to be in a state of curious, being curious about the other person, and I think that's helpful um, when we know uh, when when we're curious about that person, it, it allows us to be more mindful of how. Um, not only how they are reacting to what we're saying or how we are saying what we're saying is resonating with them. And I don't, am I making sense? I don't even know yeah. if you're making sense. Okay, good. <laughs> no, 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 you are. And I mean, good. the curiosity thing I think is actually critical. I think curiosity yeah. is something that, um, that takes effort, just like active listening. It takes effort to cultivate but that curiosity it changes our mindset. I think that's, I think you're spot on. Yeah. Asking those questions. And when you engage in that level of asking questions, being curious yeah. of the other person, your body just tends to be more, you know, it tends to lean in more, it tends to be more, you, it just follows, you yeah. know, with your conversation. And uh, um, of course it goes back to the fidgeting too. If we are not engaged, and we're not mindful of connecting, then of course we're gonna pick picking up our phone, we're gonna be, you know, distracted about other things, and and it's gonna show in our body, you know, it's like <sighs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, so the body language is I think it's vital because we can actually look like we're listening and engaging, but other than that, you know, our our body is not really engaged. Mm. Well. So will you talk more about some of the things to watch out for. I mean, you talked about fidgeting, but body yeah. language is so important. It's, yeah. it's, it's in many yeah. cases, what people see before they hear anything before yes. they, your mouth moving, all of it. So body, body language is so critical. What are some yeah. maybe ticks or yeah. things you need to, to think about when you're on stage or even on video? Right. Um, well, let me give you a, share you uh, an example of what happened to me. I was in my office one day and uh, I was stand at my stand up computer typing away and, you know, getting my work done. And somebody walked in my office and uh, she said, oh, can I talk to you about something about the project? And I said, sure. So I'm still typing <laughs> and I'm looking at her at the door. And I said, come in, come in. And then I'm still typing. I said, you're still yeah. typing? Wait a minute. You're typing and saying, come in, come in. Is that what you're yeah, doing? come in. Okay. <laughs> so here I am. I'm still typing, you know, thinking of what I'm typing. Plus, I'm engaging with her, Ooh. trying, you know, trying to listen to her, what she's trying to say. And I'm, I'm tracking. I'm literally tracking what she's saying. And I'm trying to, you know, have this conversation. She's trying to talk to me about something. And, and I said, oh, really? And, you know, I'm engaging with her as so I thought 
And um, then she abruptly said, I see you're busy. I'll come back again. I'll come mm -hmm. back later. And, and she left. And I was, I was so shocked. I felt so bad. I felt yeah. really bad. I was like, yeah. uh, it's kind of snapped me out of my bubble um, mm. and, and made me realize, wow, yeah. I wasn't really, my body literally was standing here in front of the, yeah. the computer and yeah. I was trying to, you know, do this thing. And it, it just made me feel so bad. I really yeah. felt bad that I, you know, and it made me realize, you know what? My body was not presently with her. Mm -hmm. I could have just stopped what I do did mm -hmm. and just really, you know, be more attentive. And and then at that from that moment, I realized that I had to put some boundaries in. I, I what I did was like office hours. I would either close my door if I knew I needed to get something done, mm -hmm. or um, or if I knew my I would be okay to have interruptions, I would leave my door open and I would just put everything away and then fully be right. present. And that was a learning lesson for me um, because my body was not there with that conversation. So I think some of those things we like to be more mindful is our body language. Are we engaged? Are we standing in front of the person and actually, you know, making our conversations count? Uh, are we advancing our connection? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That self-awareness that you received from that story, from that situation, that's powerful. Because I imagine from that point forward, you made those changes. Mm -hmm. you, you, mm -hmm. you, know, you decided to close your office when you didn't have the opportunity to talk with somebody. And then now when people come into your office, um, you are focused and ready. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Bawa says, I need to know more about this body language. <laughs> so any other tips that you have? Body it could be it could be fidgeting yep. or not fidgeting, mm -hmm. and it kind of ties to self awareness, doesn't it, Steph? You know, really yes, being aware yes. about your body, right? Outside of even what is coming out of your mouth, right, right. Okay, so here's a good one. Here is a good one. How many of you at the office walking down that hall to the to the water? I mean, to the the what is that lunch room? Mm -hmm. And you're walking, and then someone is walking towards you. And you go, hi, how are you? <laughs> right? You say, hi, how are you? And you keep walking. <laughs> okay, how many of us done that? Okay, we all done that, right? Yeah. Yeah, we all. <laughs> and so what's, I mean, like, really, if you wanted to know how I was, you'd stop. Mm -hmm. And Or if I wanted to, if I said, how are you, Cheryl? And I keep walking, I mean, like, we don't realize... Yeah. Um, that's one thing our body is doing. Like, we, do we really want to know how you're doing? No, because we're walking off. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's one thing. Being mindful, again, going back to if we don't really want to know how you're doing and we don't really have time to stop and be fully present yeah. and follow up with our body language being there with you, um, then we shouldn't ask. We can just say hi and have a nice day. <laughs> And so that's one. <laughs> that's really good. And Bawa says, and Bawa was who had asked the question or said, I need to know more about this body language. From what you were explaining, mm -hmm. I think it's all about concentration, concentration. and mindfulness. Just like you said, it's mindfulness. mindfulness. Truly. Yeah. 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 All right. And what other tips and tricks yeah. do you have regarding? Um, let's see. Physically. Okay. So being physically there. So some of the other things is um the energy mm. um it takes energy to connect and be present and engage uh and that is thro shown through our body as well so for example some of us um like for me when i'm on um a conference call in person, even when I'm speaking in front of people, mm -hmm. of course, you don't want to be sitting down or, or in a position where your energy is not flowing. Um, you want to be engaged. So like for me right now, I'm, I'm standing because I know <laughs> as an introvert, my energy can go like fully, I can be in a relaxed mode really quickly. And if I'm not standing up and moving around, um, 
you know, I know from how I engage, yeah. that's not the, you know, sitting down and is not a beneficial for me. So it's your again, self-awareness, right? It's just yeah, that you're going back to self-awareness. Just well, knowing who, mm -hmm. yeah, knowing who you are and how you how you best present yourself is is like 99% of how your body is able to you know be an advantage for you as a speaker, as an mm -hmm. actor, as a, a co-worker leading a project. Mm -hmm. uh, usually when we are in meetings, you, you know, we all sit around the conference table and the presenter is probably sitting there with you and the energy just seems to be, you know, just okay. But you get somebody in front of the conference room that's presenting, that's standing. Oh my gosh, it's, it's there because you're moving and you're, you know, showing, and it's just, it's just the ability to involve others, even using hand gestures, you know? point instead of pointing you want to just mm -hmm. open your hands and open. you know thank you yeah and what do you have to say and um you know we you know how can i help you and you know it's just all that <laughs> yes, and, yes 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 and you know as we're talking about being in front of somebody live it also ties to being on camera it ties to a presentation like we're doing right now it ties to creating a video like you might sit in front of your teleprompter, your big view teleprompter and create a video. Body language on camera is is so important. So what kind of kinds of tips and tricks do you have regarding yes. body language on camera? On camera, on camera. Yes, thank you. So we have that little <laughs> that little square. Use <laughs> it. <laughs> sometimes we're, you know, when sometimes you get so fixated just to use just to stand there. But you know, why not? Why not use the whole screen? And I think it's, that's another thing with big, okay, I'm getting back to big view again. Hello, those elements of those editing elements that you can yeah. just, with the, what is that? The caption things and mm -hmm. then you can make the, those. The, the titles and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's right. So that's helpful. Um, so yes, using your little square, using your hands, uh, moving back and forth, making eye contact turning away, looking back, you know, um, it's all about the engagement. Um, I forgot your question already. Okay. So that's <laughs> how we can do it in visual. I mean, yes. in the how, how, yeah, how you can, how you can create engagement, how you can create engagement. all of those things, right. the curiosity, the approachability, all of that when you're on camera. How do when you do that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Again, using your big square um, engagement, um, you know, like, oh, gestures, gestures when you're um, instead of just saying, OK, um, we're going to beef up our conversations. We can do we're going to beef up our conversations, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, so little, um, you know, at oh, my heart, I don't know, animations um, being you know, animated. So, right. Animated. So being animated. And showing your personality on camera. And so as far as body language, I know that sometimes people ask me, they're like, should I use my hands when I talk? Well, people usually don't do this when they talk, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it is more natural. If they're going to use their hands, they use their hands. So what is your take on that? Using hands and um, and, and being more animated, what is, what is the level that mm -hmm. makes sense on camera? being intentional mm -hmm. with your gestures of your hands like right now i'm using it but if i was just being intentional with no maybe I mean, you know we want to be intentional if we want to say there's three points that i want to bring up today it's you know accountability you know approachability active listening body language you know we can do it that way <laughs> or we could um you know I don't know, draw a box, you know, I don't know. Uh, I like be, we want to be intentional with our, if I want to make a point, you know, I want to make a point. Um, we can do, you, so we want to make sure our gestures match what we're saying. Hmm. And even pauses is very impactful. Mm -hmm. Making those intentional pauses. 
<laughs> to make a point. <laughs> so some of those ideas is very helpful with our hand gestures. Steph, these are so good. So if you're watching, if you're watching on the replay, if you're watching here live, let us know what tips you'll take away for your next, whether it's speaking engagement live or the next video that you put together. Uh, let us know in the chat, what are some of the things that you'll, that you've taken away from what Steph has said that you'll try and incorporate in your next one. I think the pauses are great. Pauses are very difficult because I know from experience, if there's a pause, I want to fill it with words. So having that intentionality to allow that pause is powerful. So yeah. I have a question from, um, is it okay to ask you? I've got a question here yeah. from coach Prem. Um, and the question is, and I, I think this is such a good question. Is it bad to be an introvert? Is it bad to be an introvert? That's the question. Oh, okay. What is, is it your bad? Thing? Of course not, because we are we rock the world. No, <laughs> just kidding. That's right. No, right? No, because I think I'm in the middle too. But I think we can go either way. At sometimes, introvert is basic. All it is is just basically people that recharge mm -hmm. alone, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. You yep. know, uh, it's nothing wrong with that. It's just how we recharge. Extroverts are charged and get energized with people around them in groups, right? Mm -hmm. And introverts get recharged uh, with being alone. Mm -hmm. I think what's the biggest, only because I'm an introvert, biggest thing is that when we recharge alone, we tend to be more reflective. Mm. maybe mm -hmm. more reflect we have reflecting time yeah um and that's helpful to be you know learn and apply what we've learned after our engagement we go back into our little cave and just kind of oh you know what we've learned how we've engaged with people and how we can advance our engagement and connection with that person you know i think so it's nothing bad i think it's just how we we um you know, recharge. Yeah. Good answer, Steph. And I think it aids in that self-awareness that we've been talking about. Right. That right. ability to go away and the need to recharge allows you to have the the energy to be more self-aware. I think that's really right. Good. I have yeah. a I have a question for you. And I think that this will really help our audience kind of pull all of this together as we're talking about ways to master this art of connectivity. And that's that's what it's all about. It's creating that connection, whether you're on stage, whether you're talking to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, or whether you're on video, is you've mastered approachability, active listening, and using body language the way you want through on camera or in person. How have those three skills helped you? How have they helped you in your career? I know that you had a long career in the corporate world, and now you're a business owner, you're a speaker. How have those skills helped you get where you are today? Wow, that's a deep question. No, just it's kidding. A little deep. Yeah, as I, as I came out of my mouth, I'm thinking that's you're pretty good. good. That's really good. <laughs> Putting okay, it's good because it's again reflecting. I. It's helped me literally get out of my shell mm -hmm. and think about it's all about me, which is not all about me because I think uh, living that life of not being the best person or living my purpose was hindering my ability to engage and connect with people. Because I didn't think that I had enough or I wasn't enough or I didn't have enough smartness to or value to give to others. So I was just, you know, not living my best life. And and I realized, again, over time, if I wasn't engaging, I wasn't being able to share my experiences, what I've learned how I can add value to others and it's about others, then what am I doing here? <laughs> Just taking up space. 
<laughs> right. I mean, like, right. We all have, we, you, all of us yeah, have we value. We have value to offer the world. Yeah. And whether that is that small little video or not small, that video or that message, the message you have, whether it's through video or through live interaction with people, it's something that the world or someone needs to hear. Hmm. And it could be, like I said, it could be whatever, but you, you are the only one that had that experience yeah. or that, that gem of a, a um, learning lesson that others may want to hear. So that's what I really, really learned over the years that I cannot be just hiding under my rock. That is powerful. And, yeah. and I'm so glad that you're not doing that anymore. I'm glad you're yeah. here. I'm glad you're here to share your lessons. Again, um, I ask if anyone's watching either the replay or joining us live to share a lesson because these lessons really help our speakers know what resonates. So right. what you'll take away from this, what lesson that you learned, please share that in the chat. I'd love to hear. In the yeah. meantime, I know you have a really generous giveaway. You really, it's such a generous giveaway that you're sharing with our audience. Yes. Oh, wait, you know what? I forgot one more slide. <laughs> Sorry, oh. can we go away? One more slide. I forgot. Yeah. One I more. Oh, yeah, no, no. I forgot about this too. Okay. This is why we roll <laughs> on the fly. Okay, good. So this slide, oh my gosh, this is actually from, I got this from, Dr. Ivan Meisner, author of Networking Like a Pro. I'm going to give okay. credit to him. Oh, it's in there. Anyway, open, okay, so when you go to a networking event in person, here's an op, here's a idea, or this is how. It's called open twos and threes and closed twos and threes. So you see how you're positioned. So let's say you're talking to someone, um, one other person. You're always positioning your, this is with body language, by the way, um, okay. opening yourself open, keeping open yourself open so that way somebody can just slip in to that conversation uh, yeah. and then the threes you open yourself like that so those are on the left side is an option that you want to be in when you're in a networking uh, event mm -hmm. it's helpful for someone to slip in the close twos and threes is it's going to be harder for somebody to slip in and join your conversation in a networking yeah. event yeah. So just be mindful. Again, this is going back to body language. Sorry. But um, yeah, so that's why the closed. It's a great um, visual, though, because yeah. if you think about it, it will make you think the next time you are. And it doesn't have to be a networking event. It could be some sort of public meeting Good point. where you see somebody. It can be anything like that, um, yeah. that you can change your body language to then include other people as opposed to just the person that you're speaking with. Yes, yes. Sorry. No, I love it. I love it. Okay. okay. Now your generous giveaway. Oh, yes. My generous giveaway. It's wonderful. <laughs> okay. So I, on the left side, there's a, what is that, QR code? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, all you have to do is get into that and sign up for um, a complimentary leadership newsletter. And there will be four random people selected to attend a four-hour mastermind session that i'll be conducting and this is going to be throughout the year so you'll be get to go into any one of them and that's about the everyone communicates few connect book by john c maxwell uh, we'll be masterminding on that book so that's the giveaway i'm excited to see four of you win that option I love that. And the links are also uh, in uh, in the chat, as well as your LinkedIn profile. So people can connect with you on LinkedIn, ask you questions, talk with you about connectedness, connectivity, and, and mastering the art of connection. But if you just hover your phone over that QR code, you can go to that link as well, and then sign up for the newsletter, which will put you in the running for the four hour mastermind session. I think that's hugely valuable. I mean, having the opportunity to focus on self-awareness and connectivity and other things in your mastermind session, I think that's so valuable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if anyone has any other questions, now is your chance to share them and put them in the chat. 
We can ask Steph here to answer those questions. Um, we've got some people in the chat talking more about video, about um, how to create that connectivity, how to show up as yourself, your authentic self on camera. Um, any last tips that you'd like to share about how you've been able to do that and, and kind of spin that into, into other work, which is amazing, but yeah. also be able to get you clients and, 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 and grow your business that way. So what other tips can you share with people? Okay, so if we use Big View, <laughs> yeah, that's one hundred percent. Okay, so um, I like the options of the numerous takes because usually when we load, okay, for for example, and I use the AI feature as well to write my scripts, which is beautiful because all you have to do is put a few keywords in there, and the AI script just writes your script for you. How that is so awesome, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, after this, that's what I'm going to be doing is writing all my scripts for the next, um, my next mastermind. But anyway, Very okay, cool. so how else? Yes, you can use that. You can use the different takes. So of course, you know, I don't do my, um, I, when I do my videos, I don't normally get it on the first try uh, because, you know, you have to kind of get your, vo your, your rhythm, you mm -hmm. know, because sometimes it goes too fast. Sometimes you talk too slow. And you're able to view it quickly right after you do it. And you can actually press the button to take a new take. So that will that way you can actually edit <laughs> instead of taking a hundred takes for like one video. <laughs> <laughs> you can like edit it and make it all one. I don't even I don't even know the terms of how to do it, but but it can be done. <laughs> and there's always videos on the where YouTube to watch how to do your edits right so yeah so um again standing so vital when you're doing videos and trying to connect with your audience to help them know the value that you're offering it's it's very helpful to stand up I think it's super helpful because in that way you, again you have the energy that's coming through the vibe you know, your energy vibe coming through the video. Uh, what else? Smiling is helpful. Looking at the camera while the teleprompter is scrolling. Awesome. Because a lot of times you can't even tell that you're reading something because you're looking at that teleprompter thing that's rolling for you. It's just awesome. What else? Um, I mean, technology, I know, is is pretty incredible. And all of the things you mentioned help with the three pillars that you talked about throughout this presentation is approachability, active listening, because you're listening to yourself as you're putting this yeah. presentation together, right. and your body language, focusing on how you can bring energy to your audience, mm -hmm. but not too much. Not yeah, not too much. Right. <laughs> I mean, going back, <laughs> coming forward, you know, yeah, leaning yeah. in, mm -hmm. making a point, pausing, mm -hmm. yeah. leaning out. You know, yeah. Stuff like that. yeah. We've got a question uh, from Sherry. Can Big View be used for landscape videos and on the go out in the world without using the teleprompter feature? Hmm, that might be a question for Bruno. <laughs> I don't have that answer. <laughs> and Bruno says yes. Yes. So, yes. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's Bruno says, cool. yeah, I that didn't realize funny. that. So that's fabulous. Me too. Yes. Yeah, that's fabulous. <laughs> so many things with Big I'm View. Excited. So I just wanted to say thank you, Steph. Thank you for your generosity, your wisdom, your experience, sharing that with our audience and for the opportunity to be a part of your mastermind series that's coming up, your four hour mastermind. So again, the link is in the chat. You can sign up. Uh, right there. It's actually right there on your screen. The QR code brings you to the same link that's also in the chat where you can sign up for Steph's newsletter and then be in the running for a four hour mastermind session. So please uh, do that. Have the opportunity to learn more about connecting and how to create meaningful conversations that create connectivity. You know, we've talked about AI but one of the things that won't go away, hopefully, is this connectivity with real people. <laughs> so mm. this skill is, is truly more important than ever. So thank you, Steph, mm. for sharing all of that with you, with us. We really appreciate your time and your energy. 
Thank you. Thank, thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. <laughs> Great conversation. We will see you next time for another presentation from another wonderful guest expert. We thank you for joining us today. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Bye. Bye. Aloha. <laughs> Own any room you walk into and instantly show up as the leader in your space. Hi, I'm Cheryl Tan. I'm a former TV news anchor turned entrepreneur, and I love working with leaders to help them develop three pillars of communication success messaging, presentation, and strategy. Does this sound like you? You aren't sure how to look professional on stage or on camera, and that impacts how confident you feel showing up at all. You don't know how to describe what you do simply and clearly. You are most certainly an expert in your industry, but you haven't figured out yet how to explain that better. And finally, you don't have a presence anywhere, or at least an online presence you're proud of, which means you need to figure out how you want to show up and what you need to do to create that platform. My custom plan focuses on your message, your presentation, and your strategy. Once those three things are working for you, you will get noticed by the right people and opportunities. The best way to see if we're a fit is to have a conversation. Go to CherylTanMedia.com slash consultation to book a call. I can't wait to hear your story. teleprompter create videos you're proud of easily trigger your video by selecting the words where you want to start and color your presentation with oils and highlighting keywords add your brand logo add music for an emotional touch add your contact info on an animated business card on all your videos easily replace green screen with an image or a video loop stand out with a web page with your logo your video at the center and personalized button for visitors to interact it's one tap to simultaneously upload your videos on Instagram TikTok and YouTube Always know what to say next with the Big View teleprompter.